Blackfly presents 10 school trips that went horribly wrong. Number 1. Leominster is called the Combe City because of all its plastic history, which largely explains Mayor Dean Mozzarella's haircut. But just to show you how terribly boring this now closed museum is, here's an excerpt from their website. The resident plastorian at the center is full of interesting plastic facts. He tells us that John Wesley Hyatt, grandfather of the plastics industry, an inventor of the celluloid billboard ball, was on the shortlist to have a rest stop named for him on the New Jersey Turnpike. Alas, he was repeatedly passed over for the honor. Number 2. Why? Why would any teacher ever put their kids through this? Because it's in Grafton and you didn't want to spend money going to a real museum? Seriously though, this is a museum filled with clocks. And while you're there, someone dressed up like a colonial lectures you about the evolution of clocks and watches. Field trips happen to this place in real life. Number three. I think the part of history that appealed to me the least was the pilgrims. What was to like? They moved here because the English weren't prude enough for them. They were miserable most of the time because they didn't have heating systems. There was no market basket and no Wi-Fi. You go in these huts and see what their living conditions were like. And the whole time you're thinking, people left England for this? Then if you were really lucky, they went and brought you down to Plymouth Rock. In your mind, it's this badass boulder. Then you get there and it's just a stupid rock. Number four. This was a trip that was really more for Eastern Mass kids, but lots of Central Mass kids get dragged here too because it's one of the oldest museums in the country. It's huge and chalk filled with tons of artifacts, manuscripts, culture, architecture, and gardens. The only reason you would ever go to this place is if your teacher was an asshole. It fulfills their hippie wet dreams and so they think the kids like it too. Kill me now. Number five. When you went to a welfare school like I did, you didn't get to go to the Museum of Science in Boston. That was for Shrewsbury kids. Instead, you took a 15 minute bus ride down to Massoit Road for some economical fun at the Audubon Society's Brood Meadow Brook Conservation Center. It fancies itself a place where you can go and see wildlife. But let's be real. How much wildlife can possibly exist lodged between the Grafton Hill and Granite Street? If you were really lucky, you saw a deer. But more often than not, you walked across a footbridge while your hippie guy showed you all the different kinds of algae. And if you came during the right season, you got to look at butterflies. Cool. Number 6. Some people love this place before it closed. I am not one of those people. It's exactly what it sounds like, a museum full of armory. That's it. Just a bunch of scrap metal that people wore to protect themselves from Duke of France. Ironically, from the waist down, back then they dressed exactly like women do in 2015. Number 7. You might call it the Ecotarium, but it will always be the New England Science Center to me. The only thing I looked forward to at this place was the train ride to nowhere. Aside from that, it's just a bunch of wildlife sleeping. They're always sleeping. Of course, the big draw was the now deceased polar bear. But to me, it's not worth watching wildlife if they're not killing other wildlife. That poor polar bear had the most boring life of any polar bear on Earth. Imagine spending your entire existence next to North High School. Kill me now. Number 8. I shit you not, no pun intended, many a Worcester County child has been to the water treatment plant in Millbury, also known as the place where your dumps end up. The only thing I got out of this trip I took there was thinking to myself, I better work hard in school or else I'm going to have to work at the dump conversion factory. Number 9. Generally, any field trips that didn't involve running around sucked. And when you're a 10 year old in Boston, you're basically on lockdown from Mrs. Kaplan. Even today, I have to admit that I don't get any enjoyment out of the Freedom Trail. Granted, it's a cheap date, but all you really do is look at a church, a graveyard, a couple plaques in the ground, and the place where Paul Revere took dumps. Cool. Number 10. It's funny as you grow older, you start to develop an appreciation for history. I, like many of my friends, despised history back in the day. It was a bunch of dead people wearing weird clothing and speaking a weird form of English. Couldn't care less. As a result, the hour-long trip to Lexington and Concord sucked. When I go there now, it gives me chills thinking about the balls it took to be a patriot and stand there in a field telling the King of England to go fuck himself. But back in the 90s, it was just a field. A weirdo pretending to be a patriot in a stupid gift shop. Thanks for watching another amazing video. Don't forget to subscribe for more.